Today we have two Gospels of morning, one for the Sunday before the cross, and one for the uh, Sunday that we are celebrating today. And in both of them, it's kind of a, uh, it gives us a warning, it, it brings us great joy, and then there's a warning at the end of both these Gospels. So let us start with the second Gospel, the, the parable of the marriage feast that Matthew presents to us. He presents to us basically what is salvation history. All the history summed up in this small little parable that God was going to send his son and that he was going to have a great feast and we're all going to be together in unity and in, and in joy and in peace. And so he sends his servants, the prophets, out to them, the Jewish people, to warn them and to tell them to straighten up because the son is coming and the awaiting salvation is will be here. And they ignored him. They didn't, they, uh, they didn't mind his teachings. And in fact, as the parable pointed out in some instances, they killed his servants, the prophets. And God was angry. And so he finally sent more servants out. And this time he sends them and he invites everybody because the ones he invited first were not worthy. He sends in the good, in this parable, he says, he even asked for the bad and the good to come during the marriage feast. Come to the banquet. And then we hear that indeed the hall gets filled. But God, the king, he comes in and he points out one person here. And there are probably many more, but he just in this parable, he points out one person who doesn't have a wedding garment. He wasn't dressed for the occasion, for the feast. And we hear what happens, that he has his guards take this person, bind them, and send them out, weeping and gnashing. He sends them out to the outer darkness to help. Quite odd parable, I would think, if you didn't know any context of this. Well, what is going on here? Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a parable about the entire salvation of the human race. And what God has done in, in a short, smallest parable from the very beginning to call man to salvation, to call man to believe in his son, the only begotten son, as we heard in the Gospel of John as well today, to believe in him. And for us, we, we can see that it had to do with the historical context, with the Jewish race, the Hebrew people, and, they, and God trying to call them over and over again to repentance, to believe in his son, and their rejection of him. And then him going out later to the Gentiles. But we also have to understand that this, in today's context, today, this parable is exactly for us as well. We are the inheritors of the, of the faith of the Jews. And we're this full fulfillment with the coming of, of the Messiah, Christ. And to God sends people to us always and again and again to tell us to repent of our behavior and to come to the, the, to the banquet here on earth in church. Eucharist, and, and again, we're foreshadowing the kingdom of heaven. But he tells us, and oftentimes, we like the parable have excuses that we are busy with our family, we're busy with our business, and we send the servants away that I can't make it, I'm too busy. We choose, we choose to follow the world and to serve the world rather than God. This is the truth, brothers and sisters. This is what the parable means to us today. And what is worse is sometimes we do come to the feast, but we come unprepared. We come unchanged. The church fathers tell us this very parable means that when someone comes to church unprepared, that means that they came with an unchanged heart. That they come unrepentant. They come not wanting to live out a virtuous life, but to live the same way they've always lived, with no change and no disregard for what God, Christ, has taught us. So, brothers and sisters, how many of us people who come into the church really not truly wanting to change who we are? Sometimes we come into the church not wanting to change, and we think we're going to inherit the kingdom because we came through the doors. We came through the wedding feast. We came to the banquet. We're at least here. We're at least here. We tell ourselves, at least we showed up. That's half the battle, isn't it? Just showing up. True. But according to this parable today, it angers God. It angers God. We have to show up prepared. We have to show up willing to change our hearts, to, to repent of our past sins and transgressions, and to be willing to live out in obedience to God, His will. If we don't, brothers and sisters, if we don't, if we think we can come to church and not believe all the beliefs of the church, all the teachings of the 
church and to follow the, the, the guidance of the church, we come without a wedding garment to the feast. We stick out. We stick out to our Lord as He sees us. We may be able to hide amongst the faithful. We may be able to hide our lifestyles and how we live amongst people who don't really know us. But God sees us directly into His heart. He sees who we really are. So we may be able to fool some, but we can't fool the ultimate judge of our lives. So, brothers and sisters, it's a very fearful message that we hear today in this parable. Likewise, the Gospel of John, we hear this often, right? That we see in the, in the Christian world, this John 3.16, as we read today, that God sent His only begotten Son, so that we would believe in Him and have everlasting life. We hear it so often, but then we don't hear the second part of the message. That those who do not believe in Him, those who do not attend to His teachings, will be cast out into outer darkness because they did not receive the light. We sometimes just want to focus on the first part of that message. It's a total message that we can believe in Jesus and He saves. But we have to change and we have to follow His teachings. We have to be virtuous. We have to follow the church teachings. You can't have it any other way. It's a conditional salvation. Not everyone will be saved. Sometimes we like to go through and think that. In fact, there's many Christians, many Orthodox, who might like to think that and say that, that in the end, God is so loving, that He's so merciful, that every one of us will get to heaven, no matter who we are and how we live. It's false. It's a false teaching. It's a radical teaching. There will be a judgment. Not everyone gets to heaven. Even the people who showed up to the banquet might not get to heaven, as we heard in the parable today. So it's a fearful message, brothers and sisters, and we should take it to heart and we should just work on ourselves to change, to live a virtuous life, to do better, to show up to the feast more often when we're called. He beckons, we call, we come. That's how it works. He is our God, He's our Savior. He controls us, we don't control Him. That's how it works. And we don't have to take this message and be so deadly afraid of not being saved. The good news, brothers and sisters, the good news is that He did come. He did bring salvation. And that there is a big marriage feast, a big joyful banquet for each and every one of us. That's the great news. It's all prepared and ready for us. We just have to show up prepared. Show up prepared. And we get it. He's done all the work. All of them. He's, he's, he's killed all the enemies. He said the fat calf and the cows and made a banquet for us to feast on. It's all ready for us. So all we have to do is change who we are. Wear a clean robe. Meaning we have to live a life of purity and a devotion to God. That's our part and show up. Show up, live a clean life. That's our part. God's taking care of all the rest. That's the beauty of it, brothers and sisters. It's all done for us. It's all waiting for us. So, let us hear this gospel today and let us sink into our hearts that God is continually calling us over and over again. No matter how good we think we are, no matter how obedient to the church we think we are, we can do better. We can do better. We can come to the church more often. We can come to communion more often with a clean heart, a repentant heart, having come to confession. We can come prepared to be truly a participant in the banquet and not just someone who sneaks into the door for the party and assumes that we're going to get all the benefits of it. It's not how it works because God sees us who we truly are, brothers and sisters. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.